So we are just learning who the new special representative for Iran will be as appointed by the Trump administration. And oh boy, what a doozy. Elliot Abrams of Iran-Contra fame has now been put in the position of being special representative for Iran in addition to also holding still the position of special representative for Venezuela, putting him back at the nexus of both Iran and Latin America. This is a guy who was convicted for lying to Congress about the Iran-Contra affair, was ultimately pardoned by George H.W. Bush. And Emily, here's the thing, it's like, these people should be out, like they should be kicked out of this. They should never be allowed to be rehabilitated. They should never be allowed to return. And here he is, this completely unreconstructed neocon, <laughs> now being put in charge of our policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran. Okay, first of all, unreconstructed neocon would be an amazing band name. <laughs> <laughs> unreconstructed neocon, I'm all for it. But secondly, I, I think what's happening here is that the Trump administration is extremely frustrated about what's happened with Iran and the, the sanctions not necessarily pushing Iran to the table in a way that they had expected would happen. The guy who preceded Elliot Abrams um, you know, was one of the few people in the Trump administration. He was had been there since Rex Tillerson was Secretary hmm. of State, which feels like that was 20 years years ago, it was actually the same administration. So I think what they're doing is trying to bring in a really hawkish hardliner. And yes, they but looked they at already, Elliot Abrams. They already tried. I mean, they had John Bolton at the table. Yeah. Pompeo is a hardliner. Like the what has failed in their approach to Iran is the hardline policy. Because all that they have done, I mean, look, whatever you think of the Iran nuclear deal, and to, from my perspective, I think it was actually one of the most significant accomplishments of the Obama administration, an administration that I'm frequently critical of, but that was actually a real accomplishment in my view. But whatever you think of the Iran nuclear agreement, this policy from this administration vis-a-vis -vis Iran has been an absolute disaster. It has led us nearly to the brink of war with that country, which would be a catastrophe. And what it has really done is embolden and strengthen the hardliners within that country so that now there is less opportunity to create a deal. There is less opportunity to avoid war. And at the next election, very likely you are going to get hardliners in charge of Iran. Sending Elliot Abrams in is like the complete opposite of what you would want to do here. The sanctions, this whole aggressive, hawkish regime change approach, which is really what they've been after here, led by Pompeo, led by Bolton, um, this has not worked to move us towards a deal with Iran. This has moved us away from that. It's moved us towards war. Adding Elliot Abrams to this mix just strengthens that terrible direction that they've been going, in my view. It's totally a doubling down, which yeah. is interesting because I think they're sort of bumping into a brick wall. And I think, again, they have this logic that if we just keep squeezing Iran with sanctions and squeezing tighter and tighter and tighter, they will eventually give in because it has wreaked havoc on their economy. And so I think, you know, they're, from their perspective, it's a doubling down in order to sort of accelerate the tightening of the vice grips on Iran. Now, it has not worked so far, and they have imposed really tough sanctions. And it's a question of, I mean, if it hasn't panned out over the past few years, maybe they're also just trying to run out the clock in the Trump administration with somebody who's splitting his portfolio between, as you said, Venezuela and Iran, which does put him between Latin America and Iran in this sort of like strange saga of his career. It's, right. it's an interesting thing, but I, I don't know if interesting that's- Interesting is one word for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if they're just trying to run out the clock, it, that's also possible. Well. Just so everybody recalls, um, Elliot Abrams was not just involved in the Iran-Contra scandal. I mean, he was deeply involved in all of the backing of right-wing paramilitary groups and covering up for their human rights abuses during the Reagan administration. I mean, he really has this very hardline view where essentially any left-wing government is evil, any right-wing government, no matter the atrocities, is good. He is, you know, has been for every war. He actually was opposed, deeply opposed to um, Trump. Trump in the 2016 campaign, partly because Trump, I think, you know, in rhetoric, ran on this somewhat anti-interventionist, let's bring a, let's end the endless mm -hmm. wars, let's bring people home. 
The fact that, and this is the other piece, like the fact that you would turn to people like John Bolton and people like Elliot Abrams, given your campaign rhetoric, also exposes that you didn't mean it. Like this is very much going back to the George W. Bush era. In fact, Abrams was part of the architect of the Iraq war. Um, Ilhan Omar questioned him pretty aggressively about some of the human rights atrocities that he covered for during the Reagan era when he was um, being, uh, when he was up to be special representative for Venezuela. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. In 1991, you pleaded guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress regarding your involvement in the Iran Cortra affair, for which you were later pardoned by President George H.W. Bush. I fail to understand uh, why members of this committee or the American people should find any testimony that you give uh, today to be truthful. If I can respond to that. Uh, um, it wasn't a question. Uh, I would, On was an that was it not was that was not a question. I that was sure. the, I, point, I reserve first, the right I'm, to my time. It is not it is not right. That was Remember not a question. The committee can attack On February the witness 8th, who is not permitted to reply. That that was not a question. Thank you for your participation. And here's the thing to me, Emily, and this isn't, this isn't really just, you know, we were talking about Susan Rice earlier, potentially being VP in the Biden administration. Like, you know, both sides support um, all these regime change wars. It's very consistent foreign policy, no matter, it seems, if you vote for a Republican or a Democrat. People like Elliot Abrams, they should have no place in this. They should not be put in a position of power. It's a person who lied to Congress and was convicted for it. He should be filled with shame and run out of this town. And if he held a view that was contra to the foreign policy, bipartisan, pro-war um, consensus, then he would be and he would never be allowed to return. But because he was wrong in the right way, because he lied on behalf of what is the consensus in this town, he's put back in these incredible positions of power with, you know, with potentially incredibly dangerous results. Well, I love this point that you made about how Donald Trump, the neocons, like a person like Elliot Abrams or John Bolton, were so wary of Donald Trump in 2015 and in 2016. They were freaked out by Donald Trump. Yeah. And Elliot, appointing Elliot Abrams to this position in the Trump administration to all of the points that you're making is a fascinating sort of move in, in an administration that Trump, people forget Trump's campaign in 2015 was actually really heavy on foreign policy. Yes. It was really heavy on non-interventionism. And so now that it's, we're here in 2020, a couple of months before the election, and someone like Elliot Abrams is now the leading to go like in this position. That's I think an amazing sort of a look at the arc of the Trump presidency, um, and it's one that I don't think a lot of people. When he was campaigning in 2015, if someone had said Elliot Abrams was going to be appointed to this post, Trump himself would have said, "No way, absolutely That's, this not." Is, Washington is so entrenched. This is you know we're we're turning the way the. This, I mean, it's kind of swampy. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And your point is very well taken because that was one of the things that was a key to Trump's ascent in the Republican primary in particular. When he stood next to Jeb Bush yes. and said the Iraq war was a disaster, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember his exact words, but like your brother screwed us over and we're still in this war and I'm going to get us out. I mean, that was a sort of watershed moment in Republican politics. So to fast forward to now and see Elliot Abrams in charge of our Iran policy, wow. It is quite a remarkable turn. All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.